This is Joel Hastings with Dairy Business. We're here today at the ribbon cutting in Turlock, California for the recently acquired CDI plant, California Dairy's powder plant. And we're with Andre Mishlashevsky, the CEO, well known and long time. Uh, Andre, welcome. Thank you very much. We are pleased for the invitation today. Tell us, uh, where does this plant fit in the uh, overall production and marketing strategies of CDI? Sure. Well, first of all, thank you very much for coming out today. Uh, this plant is very important to us. As you look at California dairies, we have six manufacturing assets around the state. This becomes our seventh. But many of our assets have some older equipment and have been in the system for some time. By acquiring this state-of-the-art facility, it complements what we're already doing very well. Additionally, we are the powder experts in the United States. We're the largest producer of milk powder. We're the largest producer of skim milk powder in the world. And so this facility has state-of-the-art technology. It has some of the newest and uh, latest and greatest gadgets. And it fits into our system very well. We have an existing base of customers. Uh, as I say, we know the powder business very well. And it will complement what we already do across the state in an excellent fashion. Is there a particular variety or product line that you're producing here that uh, you haven't been doing at some of your other facilities? Uh, most of the product that we produce here, we can produce in some of our other facilities, so it'd be an addition to, but we have much greater capacity in what we call our value-add products, which are the high-end uh, skim milk powder, the low spore, high heat, um, low nitrate uh, and nitrate products. It gives us a much uh, broader portfolio of the value, value add products, which we incidentally would make a higher margin on in the world marketplace. Uh, most of the powder that we produce here would be powder that we would ship around the world. Obviously, skim milk powder is not sold in the U.S., so we'd be selling it in about 50 countries around the world. Uh, we can't talk about skim milk powder exports, I don't think, at least here on the West Coast, without at least asking a question about what's the status of your shipments and marketing to China between the uh, tariff issues and the uh, uh, hog, hog uh, illness issues that's, that's uh, caused them to lose so many, so many hogs that do uh, are fed a dairy powder. Uh, just talk a little bit about China. Sure. Well, I could talk about China, but let's maybe just spend 30 seconds, 15 seconds on trade in general. Shipping product outside the country is very, very important to California dairies. About half of the milk that we bring into our own plants is destined for a location outside of the United States. So trade becomes very, very important. First and foremost is USMCA to make sure we have an agreement in place at minimum with Mexico. So that's highly important. But you referenced China. Uh, our business in China, they were the third largest market that we had in terms of shipping product outside the United States. Today, they're virtually in last place. We ship almost nothing to China since the new tariff regime went into place. Now, we understand the issues in China, but it is a very important market for us. Uh, more importantly, the agreement that we had pre the current regime of tariffs was not a great agreement to start with. Oceana had a preferred treatment in the market and we did not have a level playing field uh, with the tariffs that only compounded the problem. Uh, but looking forward, if we get a resolution in China, it'd be a big win for us, a big win for California, a big win for dairy. But more importantly, if we do get a win back in China, we need to have a level playing field and at least a similar agreement to other countries shipping into the market. You mentioned a moment ago, speaking of trade agreements, uh, USMCA, and we hear from uh, the dairy statistics that Mexico is a big market for U.S. dairy. Uh, what is the situation with your customers in Mexico? Well, for us, fortunately, at California Dairies, the two products that we produce, which are butter and milk powder, haven't been subject to any retaliatory tariffs in Mexico. So our business has somewhat been uninterrupted shipping into those markets. We're a closer location than some of our competitors, so we've had access. That has not stopped some of our customers for looking for alternative suppliers as a risk management tool. But we don't make cheese. But if you're a producer of cheese, it's had a uh, very large impact on your business. Uh, we just don't happen to be in the cheese business because the retaliatory tariffs happened on cheese. But it's important to the whole dairy industry. We believe that due to the situation in Mexico on cheese and the situation in China, that it has depressed and slowed the recovery of milk prices in the United States. 
Uh, we can't end an interview with a co-op leader without at least asking about what are you projecting for the near-term milk prices? We've seen, we've all seen some relief from a producer standpoint. Uh, what are you looking for for your members uh, in the months ahead? Well, we're actually very optimistic. Um, we think it's a slow road to recovery, but it is a road to recovery, so room for optimism and some bullishness on, uh, on dairy prices. Uh, if you ask me kind of the drivers for that, uh, demand for fat products and butter is up substantially. If you look at production, it's actually a little bit soft. So demand is exceeding supply on the fat side of the business as we sit here today. On the powder side of the business, powder prices have recovered globally, and the European Union has sold out the extensive stocks that they had. In addition to that, there's a drought going on in New Zealand, which has affected their production, although it's off-season, has affected production. So with demand strong, supply short in the EU, supply getting a little short in Oceania, it bodes well for both the powder and the fat markets in the United States, which are drivers of part of the federal formula. In terms of the cheese business, if we resolve some of the issues uh, on the international marketplace, we see some strength for some significant growth. Uh, many times we're asked what that is, and we'd say over the next 12 months, maybe a 10 to 15 percent increase in milk pricing. That sounds very exciting. One last question about the impact of the uh, federal order implementation here in California. CDI, along with the other major co-ops, were active in uh, bringing that to a vote of producers. Uh, what's the early reaction to uh, how federal order pricing is going? Well, from our perspective, and I think from our farmer's perspective, people are delighted with the way this has moved forward. Uh, it has been an improvement in milk price for our farmers. Uh, they've been able to recover some things that used to come out of the transportation or out of the pool, like transportation funding, fortification allowances. So I think our farmers are in a better position now. Um, supply has not grown at the early levels that were predicted, which means we think we made the right decision and it's gone fairly well as we've implemented so far. Thank you very much. Speaking with Andre Miklachevsky, who is the CEO of California Dairies, we're at the ribbon cutting ceremony for the recently acquired plant in Turlock, California. This is Joel Hastings for DairyBusiness.com.